Hi guys, I was just recently out in the wheat belt doing some photography. I love going out to those little small outback towns and finding stuff. So this was a scene that I quite liked and um, don't ask me why, but it's something about the, the way the trees sort of leaning over. You got the, the concrete um, seating there and yeah, just a few other bits and pieces. I quite liked the view. So, But I wanted to sort of add a new sky and, and give it a bit of that desaturated look that I like. So. Um, first thing I'm going to do, I grab the file, let's just hit F on the keyboard to get a full screen view without any obstructions and distractions. I'm going to go to channels and we're just going to create a, a, a mask uh, using the blue channel. So we're going to click on the blue channel, take it down to this icon here which will duplicate it, give us a copy. And then we're going to go Command L on the keyboard which will be a shortcut to bring up the levels dialog box. And we're just going to bring up the white point, sorry, the black point, make things blacker, sorry. Boy, it's too early in the morning, I haven't had a coffee yet. What is it, 8.14 in the morning? That's a bit early. And now you can see we're getting a fairly good um, uh, little mask there, so it's going black and white. We want to be careful we don't go too far and make that uh, all those little bits of the tree disappear or get too thick. So that's okay until about there. And this white can go there. I'm starting to lose a few bits there. Anyway, it's kind of close like that. Let's click OK, zoom out, see what we've got. Now I'm going to use the dodge and burn tool. So O is the shortcut on the keyboard. And I'm just going to go shift, hit shift O and go to the burn tool. Our range is set to shadows, exposure 100%. And I'm just going to go over the tree there a little bit and then over this foreground. Let's hit tab on the keyboard to get rid of the tools for a sec. Just going to go over that. We can see that there's a few issues. Um, there's going to be some issues with um, some of the stuff. That sign, for example, that sign's not a problem because I'm going to get rid of that anyway. Uh, as we go over it, you can see it's giving us a fairly good. Uh, black there and then I'm going to go shift O twice because you'll find that if you go shift O once after using the burn tool it'll go to the desaturate tool which is that one there but we don't want to do that we want to go to see that one there to the highlights make our brush use the, the right square brackets make the brush bigger and we'll just go over that you can see there's going to be some issues but Never mind, we'll sort that out maybe this way. And just go, but you don't want to hit that tree too hard. Just go over it maybe once and, and see what happens. But we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. This is all just an experiment. Okay, once you got that, you can see there, looks like a pretty good mask. We're going to click on this little icon here, which will load it as a selection. And then we're going to go back, click on RGB, bring the color back, hit Command Shift I to invert that selection. And now it's all the foreground is what we're going to have there to cut out. So go back to layers, Command J, there it is. Before that, if we wanted to go in, we could go up to the um, uh, and refine that edge if we want. But I never worry too much about that. I just uh, do it as quick and easy as possible. Uh, so Command J, and now we're going to click on the background layer there, hit F on the keyboard twice, then we can see what's behind. Some of you guys may not, uh, you might have your application frame up, which means that you can't see what's behind, which is annoying. I turn that off. So that's up here somewhere, uh, application frame down the bottom there. I turn that off so I can actually see behind. And there's the image I want of the sky, which I shot earlier. And that's going to go in behind there, so F on the keyboard, and we'll just reposition that sky so that it fits in there perfectly, and it looks pretty good. So there we have a new sky stuck in. Now the the mask you can see is a bit dodge. Um, there's a few issues with some of these fine branches. I mean, you can go through your afterwards and clone them out if you like. And it's one way of doing it. But if we duplicate that sky layer change that in a minute to um, the top onto screen, 
we also click on the first the, the cutout layer of the foreground and which is this one here if I turn that one off you can see duplicate that command J go to the bottom one change the blend mode to multiply which will make it all darker multiply come on there you go. now you see when I did that see how the edge is a lot better than it was before it just sort of thickens it up so it can fix up a lot of those problem areas if you go back to your, your sky the, the duplicated sky layer change the blend mode to screen then all of a sudden the edges are near on perfect but obviously the skies pretty bright so we're just going to drop the opacity of that layer but with the look I want to get I, I want to have that sort of that sort of bright sort of washed out look anyway so once we've done that go back to the top layer and to get these sort of these cool looks and tones I do a couple of different uh, LUTs so I go to the color lookup uh, in adjustment layer and I'll go to a LUT one I might I, what I like at the moment is the teal and orange and that gives you um, a much kind of different sort of looking it's a kind of a greenier looking sky if that's too strong you just pull the opacity back on that so all of a sudden your sky doesn't look so magenta it looks quite I mean that's what the skies look like pretty much but I'd rather they look like that personally and you can see the reds become more kind of orangey red as opposed to a magenta -y red then then I'll go and do another look up, colour look up, and this time I'll do a futuristic bleak, which some of you may have heard about before. Bang on about futuristic bleak. Where are you? You can see I've got lots of LUTs loaded because I use a program called 3D LUT Creator, and in there there's a whole lot of presets that you can download and add to Photoshop. So there's that, and now what I normally do is I'll change the blend mode to screen. And my computer's going very slow at the moment and then all of a sudden it's kind of washed out looking so then from there you can pull that back a bit so that's not so strong I'm just looking at my whites I just want my, don't want my whites to be completely blown to bits yeah, something like that and then just to finish off um, well I'm going to crop this I think but also what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to channels and I'm going to click command click on the RGB channel once it's going to load everything that's 50% grey or lighter and then I'm going to hold down the shift key command shift and then click two more times once, twice oh, let's, bugger, let's do it three times three times a lady click back on the RGB and then I'm going to invert that command shift I I'm going to go back to my layers palette and I'm going to go to a levels adjustment layer and I'm just going to use this now to add a bit of black back into those darker areas already so where it's kind of a bit lacking contrast I just pull this up and you can just see I zoom in a bit to the tree how it's just added a little bit more contrast just through some areas but it hasn't affected the sky or anywhere else it's just really small amount if I click if I option click on the layer mask you can see nothing else, I mean, only stuff in white is it's going to be affected and everything else won't be affected so much so it's just adding a little bit of a contrast boost and keeping it us, everything else like it is okay so that's that's pretty much the sort of look I'm chasing and then I'll go see the crop get a ratio of a one to one there it is and let's fill it up a bit and position that where I want it to go, hit return, and there's my image. And um, yeah, you, know, you might love it or hate it, but I'm, I'm into this sort of banal stuff at the moment. I'm, I'm into you know things that are a bit odd. I, I'm over the, the classic landscape, although I still love doing that and still produce those images. But you know, going out searching for this sort of stuff is, is, is more interesting to me. So let's go back to the start and see what it looked like. So that's what it originally looked like. I don't know where that black line came from. Anyway, that's fine. Got a bit more sky in there. So before, after. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Cheers.